Hello and welcome to another podcast from Odell Technology. Today we're lucky enough to be joined by Asaf Banea. Hello, Asaf. Hi, Stephen. Good, good to see you. It's good, good to see you again. Um, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for joining us today. Um, Asaf, I wouldn't well, I would like it if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself, your professional background, where you started from, because you've got quite an extensive history. Well, um, basically, today I'm running two funds, uh, one of which called Sanara Ventures, which is a joint venture of Philips and Teva uh, based in Israel. We do seed stage investment uh, like an incubator VC. We are investing in digital health, in medical devices and in bioconvergence technologies. Um, we started some nine years ago, uh, and we're basically investing like one or $1.5 million in very early stage, seed stage companies in an incubation phase. The, the second fund which I'm running as of a year and a half ago is called Sanara Capital, which is basically uh, a post-incubation fund, mostly focusing on A round, uh, whether uh, companies that started in our own incubator or could be other Israeli related companies. Uh, and at the moment, uh, we have four or soon to be five investments, you know, typically companies that are raising, you know, five to 10, five to 15 million dollars, that would be the sweet spot. And we're now putting up to, I would say up to $4 million in, in those uh, in those uh, A-round companies, the post-incubation companies in Sanara Capital. Aside from Sanara, I've been the chairman of the Life Science Board of the Israeli Export Institute for the last seven years, still am. Uh, the Export Institute is promoting about eight to $10 billion of life science, biotech, pharma, medical devices um, included uh, out of Israel. And it's like an extension of the Ministry of Economy in Israel and basically working with, uh, I would say like 40 commercial attaches around the world um, so this, uh, you know, in trying to promote and scale uh, life science companies out of Israel, this is something that I've been doing for the last seven years. Um, I'm heading for that matter. Uh, next week will be in Vegas uh, for the health conference, part of the Israeli national booth that we have and promoting under the Israeli Export Institute. Um, and maybe one more thing, uh, as, as a part of my background, uh, is uh, that I've been a consultant to the venture capital team of the World Bank, of the IFC, the uh, International Finance Corporation based in, in Washington. Uh, and aside from looking for equity investment in a later stage, I would say mainly BNC rounds investments, I was also involved in building up uh, something which I'm very proud of. <laughs> this is this is one of the reasons I'm sharing. It's called the TAC Emerge. This is basically bringing medical innovation to growth markets. Uh, initially, we started in India with hospitals supported by the World Bank. Uh, like Apollo, Fortis, Max, and others, and bringing in medical innovations from around the world uh, to be tested and validated in those hospitals. And later on, we took it down to Brazil to Sao Paulo and then expanding that to, to Africa and other markets. So uh, being a medical entrepreneur for 10 years before that and was involved in quite a few other, uh, uh, always on the innovation, corporate government side. So uh, in some cases, I define myself as one that uh, uh, does not accept the status quo. I, I, you know, there's so much innovation out there, and we're trying to bring that innovation in the medical space to where it should be. Uh, so this is part of what I do. With Sonara Ventures, you've got Philips and you've got Takeda as involved in partnerships. Can you talk a little bit more about that, please? Yeah, some nine years ago, both Philips and Teva, Teva Pharmaceutical. Uh, joined forces in a very beautiful project whereby, you know, they said we, they, they, they were claiming that they would like to be exposed to the amazing Israeli landscape in innovation in healthcare. And the beauty in that is the fact that actually they don't step on nobody's toes. So Teva being a pharma genetic, a generic company, sorry, and, and uh, focusing also on, to some extent on innovation. These days, by the way, the innovation component is much growing in Teva. But Philips being a device company while doing a transition from a consumer electronic company to a, a medical device company and two digital health, obviously connected care and others. So they joined forces and, and we basically built Sanara as an incubator VC and started to invest like a million, million point five, also supported by the Israel Innovation Authority. So quite a known and prestigious uh, uh a program called the, the Israel Incubator Program, which the government of Israel and mostly the Israeli Innovation Authority, they bring matching funds to those companies that we invest in, and they mitigate the risk for companies such as Teva, Philips, and you know a few other giants from overseas, Metronic, Takeda from Japan, that have all shared those uh, franchise of an incubator in Israel, simply because of the fact that they wanted to be exposed to the Israeli landscape. They wanted to see what's happening on the ground. They wanted to see the the emerging of those technologies 
uh, in each one in its own specific fields. You know, it could be biotech and pharma, it could be others, but uh, this is where we started. And we invested, uh, now we have about 20 companies in the incubator, some of which are moving after those two or three years of incubation to become potential candidates for our follow-up funds and our capital. You know, and we can cherry pick the best companies from the incubator like we did in two and soon to be three cases and two other investments were just from the Israeli landscape or other Israeli related companies. So we can invest, by the way, in overseas companies as long as they have an, an, an Israeli angle to that, because otherwise, you know, we, we, we should lose our ability to dive deeply into. But how would that work? How would they get an Israeli angle? Would they set up an office in Israel? Well, mostly, you know, it could be uh, could be a company in Boston which uh, started with uh, an Israeli uh, researcher out of Harvard or MIT or whatever it may be, could be. So we as a fund, when you look into uh, some technologies, you know, we, we would like to position ourselves as those that are quite well acquainted and familiar with the Israeli landscape or, you know, uh, professor, clinicians and others that, that emerge from the Israeli landscape and we can run a thorough due diligence. That's the main idea. Otherwise, you know, if we would have gone to Germany, Spain, whatever, and just invest in companies that we don't have a clue, I don't think we should uh, get too much of our unique advantage while well, investing in Israeli technologies, mostly in Israel, but also Israeli related and, and could be in different geographies. We can always connect our know-how and expertise into that due diligence, which is very important to us. Where are you finding the greatest opportunity with your venture fund currently? Um, you know, the digital health landscape is coming uh, is coming along, and it's. I've been consistently saying that this is a trend that left the station, despite the difficulties and despite the fact that we've been seeing companies being shut down, like Per, you know, on the mental health and other, and some of the telemedicine companies or the business models related to telemedicine, which we had great hopes, kind of. Uh, were falling down after COVID and did not materialize as we expected to be. So some of those verticals within the digital health landscape did not yet fulfill the promise. Nonetheless, I, I'm always saying, and I'm, I'm confident about it, that this is a trend that left the station. Digital health will be as a bigger revolution as it was in the banking industry, in the automotive industry. So definitely, this is something that we also in Sanara are looking into, digital health. The other is kind of vice versa. The medical device landscape is, uh, you know, to some extent, it, sometimes it's not sexy just because, you know, this is the cyclical nature of venture capital and it comes and goes. But we see ourselves also investing in medical devices in those niche markets that we feel confident that we can invest in. Uh, one of our companies, a company called Lidus Medical, is a, a microsurgery company that comes up with a solution for a small blood vessels anastomosis with a and two giants, two strategic uh, giants, one, one from the US and one from the Asian market invested in that company. So this would be our, our second uh, area to invest in. And third would be, and this is uh, tremendously now, um, uh, tremendously growing globally, uh, uh, which we call, you know, the on the biotech side, it's called the bioconvergence. This is actually biology converging into tech, biology converging into either deep tech or, you know, could be biology and physics or biology and chemistry. But the idea in bioconvergence is actually the multidisciplinary approach to biology. And that can create and bring in um, uh, enabling technologies that eventually could be materialized in diagnostic or in drug delivery systems. But the core technology within that, uh, within that uh, device or system would be supported by a convergence of various disciplines including biology, that that brings the, the disruption or that will bring, you know, the ability to deliver drugs and maybe potentially crossing the blood-brain barrier or whatever it may be the use case. But this is the bioconvergence area. One of our companies, for instance, which we invested in is a company called NanoDrops. These are drops in your eyes to replace lenses and glasses. And the beauty in the combination comes from the combination of physics and biology. This is where the breakthrough came. And this is a, a good example of bioconvergence uh, company. I mean, when you look at these companies for investment, what are the criteria that you're looking for? Are you looking for early reimbursement? Are you looking for early market access, um, pre-existing reimbursement? What is it you're looking for? We're looking for good people. <laughs> That's a good answer. That's a good I'm, answer. Honestly, as much as we can shy away from that and repeat ourselves, and it may sound redundant to just say it again and again, we invest in people and not in technologies eventually, but it's... Um, 
you know, I've been in, the, in this industry for quite some time. This is eventually, even with the most destructive technologies, you want to have a CEO that knows and understands the product market fit, truly listens, not just trying to sell and sell and sell, but truly listen to the consumer, to the customer, to, to shape that product market fit. Let it be on the pricing side, on the reimbursement side, as you've mentioned, Stephen, or let it be anything that had to do with the uh, functionality or the use case of the product. But eventually, eventually, with all due respect to technologies, let them be as disruptive as they are. You know, these are the people that can listen. And and by the way, Israelis in some cases don't like to listen. They, you know, they are rushing to the marketplace with amazing technologies. And our job as investors, as VCs, is you know either on the board level or elsewhere, is to really make sure that they listen and and and, and basically come up with the right business model. Specifically, when we talk about digital health, in digital health. Eventually, what, what define a failure or a success would be the business model of the company. It could be the most amazing technology, but if this is not what I typically define as the three assets, the superman of, you know, of, of basically a saleable product and a scalable product and a sustainable product, then, then the company may be able to sell and, and get excited in the first two or three years by making, I don't know, $300,000, $700,000. But eventually, if they don't have a scale-up business model, they're not going to succeed and maybe shut down. Asaf, so would you mind repeating those three words? That was saleable? Saleable. saleable. You know, in some cases, this is this is typical for investors such as ourselves when we are focusing on, on, on early-stage companies. In some, in some cases, you don't have any visibility as to the product. You have a core technology. Let it be as amazing as it could be. But then you are choosing the use cases, the clinical use cases, right? So basically uh, moving from a technology to a product, but the product is not enough. It may not be addressing a huge market. It may not be addressing a true market need, you know, that eventually people will pay about it. In some cases, we've been talking to some of our entrepreneurs and we've been telling them, you know, the fact that you've been talking to a radiologist or neurologist or whatever it may be, and even though they got excited, you know, because their job is to save people, Eventually, who's going to pay for that product is the CFO of the hospital or the CIO of the hospital, you know? So you need to talk to them and make sure that you identify the value chain and who is making the decisions and who are, you know, who brings the most value and what would be the reimbursement or what would be the business model where actually you bring either you save capital, you bring more revenues to the hospital, or you may be doing something which is, um, um, uh, you may be doing something which is, you know, uh, creates more procedures to the hospital, whatever you identify that uh, need that has been addressed, this is fine. But but now let's see that someone is willing to pay and pay enough for that value. Otherwise, you may need to pivot and take the company elsewhere. Just, you know, um, a, a, a scenario typically in a, as, as the way we are looking to scale companies globally, this is scaling companies in the medical industry is quite tough. And I think scaling... Uh, and, and, and then again, it's, the business model could be validations of new technologies in various places. What, what we are trying to do, and this is, I hope, that it could be notified as unique about Sanara conceptually, is that the fact that we have built quite unique advisory board globally. And some people are teasing me, and I'll share with you momentarily why. Because, you know, I'm saying in conferences, in meetings, whatever, we have an advisory board of 117 people. And people are saying, Really, Asaf, how can you manage 117 people? It's like, sounds crazy, right? <laughs> Nonetheless, I, I'm okay with it. I think, you know, I'm I'm really passionate about knowledge sharing, knowledge sharing. We cannot just, we as an industry, we cannot just keep on doing the same mistakes, you know, and and try to come up with the best technologies on someone's door in a hospital in, 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 in the UK or in a hospital in Paris or in, or in Boston and hope that they will understand and hope that they will have enough... Uh, bandwidth to to adopt that and to try and validate that new technology and as such you know we as an industry and definitely as investors we need to come up with platforms and mechanism and structure to do in more structured way knowledge sharing in order to save capital not just to deploy again five million dollars and again five million dollars just to hope that the company will reach such and such uh, sales so let it be on the use cases let it be on the business model let it be on the introduction to strategic partners that you know they are more open-minded and some are less open-minded maybe because something is happening at the time with, with a strategic partner. So there are 
thousands of ways to do knowledge sharing in a more structured way. And one of the things that we have decided to do in Sanar is to build that big advisory board with different expertise. You know, we can have uh, expertise in the Parkinson disease. We can have expertise in, in stroke cases. We can have expertise by some folks from the US or from the UK or from India or Japan, which we approach them in order to speak about, you know, uh, chronic diseases and, and, and others or primary care or, or surgery. So, it's on a case by case. This is why we have built that mechanism in order to mitigate and make sure that we have people to talk to eventually, either for due diligence purposes, when we invest in companies, or once they have become a portfolio company, to help them in terms of door openings capabilities, which Sanara is passionate about. So I'm not just looking to deploy capital and hope for the best and meet the companies every quarter for a board meeting but rather really help them and make sure that they are getting value from us as, as much as they can bring value with their job. Our job is not just to deploy capital, but rather uh, bring more value. And one of the ways to do so, which we have decided to do so, is through that unique advisory board of, of people with expertise in the medical field in various geographies worldwide, which we are trying to help our companies in those uh, introductions and later on in those uh, validations and soon to become commercial sales of those technologies. Thank you very much. That was excellent. So, Asaf, if people want to make contact with you, how do they go about it? Well, whoever looks into Sanara website, S-A-N-A-R-A, -A -A, there, there are two funds over there, Sanara Ventures, Sanara Capital. Myself, my team are there. We are available, you know, to, to communicate and talk and very much happy to do so. Um, and I, I wanted to thank you very much for your time today. You've been sure. fantastic. Thank you so much, Stephen. Very, very happy to talk to you today.